Uh, this one I wrote actually after another Denver lad died. His name was Dean Reed. He was uh, very famous in, <clears throat> in the Eastern Bloc. And I wrote this after I heard that he died, but I didn't know that he was drowned. Yesterday, the day before, a week of waves lapping against death's doors, I stand on the shore of this island, which is myself enmeshed in the threads of what I dream, and those who are dead knock against the sand, so that, alarmed by their presence, I am continually thrust into their arms and drowned again in sleep. Slowly the reeds part. Swiftly thought rises and congeals to form a possible day, a new disguise in which to face tomorrow, because there is no way we can plunge into the depths and stay there, or make a leisurely return to light with our pockets full of sacred treasures stolen from the night. Instead, we slip the forbidden pennies up our sleeves and pretend we don't know of their existence. They are too subtle to spend, too vague to apprehend a substance or worth. They are the coins on a dead man's eyes, the seal under which our secret vows are signed and forgotten forever. Um, this one is called Galactic Runaway, the title poem. And it's taken from a, a report by a, a New York Times writer called uh, Dennis Overby. A blue star has been spotted flying out of the Milky Way at 1.5 million miles per hour, three times as massive as the sun, 196,000 light years from its home in the constellation Hydra. The outcast star trail leads straight back to the center of the galaxy where it dwells, where dwells a giant black hole gobbling all that comes its way. But in certain circumstances, a star can be diverted at high speed from a near miss with a black hole, like a stone in a slingshot. If a pair of stars orbiting each other passes close by, enormous tidal forces could rip the two apart like a pair of ice skaters holding hands and twirling. One falls down, the other goes flying off. No other way to explain how a star can shoot through the outskirts of the galaxy at such velocity, unless it is an interloper and never belonged in the Milky Way in the first place. I don't know why, I, th I feel like I'm going to read some more kind of anthropological poems here. The Ruins of Los Humanos. Leaving Albuquerque, we drive east and south, deep into Salinas country. El Gran Quivera used to be the home of Los Humanos, a people taller than most Pueblo Indians who ate a lot of meat. They kept turkeys and slept under down comforters, snuggled into tiny rooms like rabbit hutches with little windows connecting everyone together. There were no passageways. Next door, the Spanish built a monastery with long corridors, neat cells, a communal dining hall, and a towering cathedral. The Humanas, however, abandoned Gran Quivera soon after the black robes arrived. Maybe they didn't like being slaves. Maybe the sheep the priests brought with them exhausted the water supply. Or maybe they just couldn't stand mutton. <laughs> Russian blues. My motto is to be totally subversive which sounds a bit like being subservient, but obviously it's the opposite. I mean to ride the waves in jungle town by overthrowing petty technocrats, surfing beyond insular shores belonging to mad dictators and moldy apparatchiks in shiny suits. Is there anything else left to talk about? Revolution in the suburbs? 
I guess I'm dreaming this scenario. Instead, the heavens overflow with driftwood from the valley. Water weeps and all is asunder. A tide or current changes and your life stops. Fur was a far friendlier grab than the gold rush. Um, Instinct is inherited memory. We are not born, as Locke said, with pure blank pages. There are combinations of love and fear locked in our genes, blind spots. <coughs> Excuse me. Blind spots waiting in shadow, messages flashed like Morse code across the banks of a river. I want to find the corner of this white page and peel it away. I want to hold the ruin, the reins of a sleigh in the vast interior of a Russian novel. But I can't control the horses. Behind me, there is a trail of blood and the iconography of bird tracks. A thousand delicate stars, scars mark the landscape. <clears throat> I feel it in my bones, the intricate roots of our nomadic wandering, the fluttering hand of my grandmother who fled after the revolution with two small children, hid in a graveyard all night before she found a fishing boat to take her to Finland the nervous chime of her bangles and the rattling teacup make me think of her hand as a bird trying to escape. All right, here are a few more. How much time do I have left? Um. <coughs> Maybe I'll just read. Uh, I've labeled these cultural wars, and <clears throat> there's a, they're from newspaper reports. This one was from a Harper's. Losing your penis in Lagos. <laughs> Someone would suddenly yell, thief, my genitals are gone. <laughs> then a culprit would be identified, apprehended, and often killed. Uh, McCain in his first debate on health care. <laughs> I think it's important for doctors to discuss these matters with their deceased. <laughs> Mistake. 65-year-old, I think this is in Denver. 65-year-old um, disabled man in bed holding soda pop can killed by cop who climbed in window. <coughs> That's not really very funny, actually. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to end with this, <clears throat> because Neil died in Mexico, and I just came back from Mexico, actually. I guess it's probably taken from the Popol Vuh. <clears throat> the ages of the sun. <clears throat> the world is a poem, and they who speak will have flowers spiraling out of their mouths, glyphic, Metaphors carved in stone will tell the story, the ages of the sun. <clears throat> the first sun was called sun of water. Its sign was for water. Then it happened. Water carried everything away. The people were turned into fish. Then the second sun was founded. Its sign was for tiger. It was called sun of tiger. In this sun, giants lived who greeted each other thus, do not fall down, for whoever falls, falls forever. When the sun arrived at midday, it became night, and the tigers ate the people. Then the third sun was founded. Its sign was for rain of fire. When the fire rained down, those who lived there were burned. Then the sand rained down, stones of all sizes. They boiled, big rocks became red. The fourth sun was called sun of wind. Its sign was for wind. The wind carried everything away. People were turned into monkeys, and the monkey men scattered over the mountains. I think this is really, you know, anthropological and historical, <coughs> the, the ages of the sun. The fifth sun is called the sun of movement, because the sun moves on course. This is the sun we live in now. There will be earthquakes and hunger, and we will perish. Thank you. Yeah. Uh.